Any visitor to Lullingston Castle Gardens is left in no doubt that the time and effort has certainly paid off to create this beautiful area to visit. It was actually the vision of one man, Tom Hartdyke, who decided that this was his life's work to build a world garden. We met with Tom to find out more. The whole idea, Julie, started June the 16th, just gone midday 10 years ago, when I was going to be shot in Colombia. Uh, when I was kidnapped with this group to this day, we don't know who they were, what they wanted. And after three months of being in captivity in a place we should never have been in the first place, looking for these orchids in Colombia, um, they said, our captors, you've got five hours, mate, before we blow your heads off. I know what else do you say, Julie? And then he turned his back, this chap, 17, just turned 17 year old. The minute he turned his back, I thought, I've got five hours to live. What am I going to do? Opened up my diary, a diary I've been keeping during captivity and travelling beforehand. Started scribbling my dream garden design plan, the world garden where we are now, as a way of sort of dealing with the situation, I guess. And from that day, that teenager has changed my entire life. Yeah, they came back and just laughed at us and said, uh, it's a bit of a joke, well, wasn't it funny? I sort of said, well, it's not that funny, senior. And they laughed and said, uh, well, tomorrow will be for real. And this went on and on and on all the time. It was just their sort of games they played, basically. In hindsight, it was hilarious for them, but I was very scared, to put it mildly. And um, that's what's come from it. Well, things got worse as they went along. It shivers down my spine even talking about it. I mean, the captors became very hostile. Um, they wanted $50 million each for our ransom, me and Paul, the girl I was with, and they never got it. So they released us with no explanation. Happy Christmas, get lost. They said, come back and we'll, or, or we'll blow your heads off. And here's all your stuff back. They gave everything back. They took to us three quarters of a year earlier. Health passports, driver's license, Lloyd's TSB card from the high street in Seven Oaks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was mad. And then they just were saying, please don't talk about orchids anymore. Apparently they said I talked too much and they were just paying to get, they were giving us money. They started to pay to get rid of us. It was just unbelievable, they were giving us money and food. We couldn't believe it. And there was the first case of its kind and probably the last ever without a body bag, disappear permanently or a ransom. We just walked straight out of there and got back for the shortest day of the year, December the 21st for Christmas, 10 years ago. The climbing Red Cross actually got us out of the area. No one believed that we were alive. People still don't believe I'm alive today. I mean, I pinch myself every morning. I like to think that you take that situation that they've been almost forced into, these school kids, really, that we were with, most of them, 500 of them that were keeping us, you take that sort of, the troubles away from their land, they're actually probably a recent, really, really decent bunch of people, actually. They've been forced into this for whatever reason, extraordinary situation, and it's turned them into actually quite scary, nasty people. But without that, they would be just normal school kids at your local school in Seven Oaks. You know, it's just that situation they're in. As we, we in hindsight, felt sorry for them actually. Not at the time though, because they were going to kill us. You know, and you have to say that if you took out Colombia, in fact, take out those just three or four minutes on June the 16th, 10 years ago, what he said to to me, life would be totally different. I mean, there wouldn't be the garden, they wouldn't, wouldn't be talking to you now. All these things that have come from it, TV programmes, writing two books about the experience and also um, the garden that's resulted from that. So it's been amazing. And the bottom line is as well, is keeping the whole estate at Lullingston going. That's something I didn't plan for on June the 16th. It was just thinking about where things come from in the miniature native lands and to show you who introduced them, not the bigger picture of the, the whole estate. So it's been absolutely brilliant. I, I'd just love to go back to South America again. And I'm going to go at the end of November this year to, to a plant hunt on the Peruvian safe, safe, Peruvian, Bolivian, Argentinian border, that's going to be brilliant for three weeks. And to continue to bring back plants to, to the World Garden, for visitors to see that come round and to see plants that people have never seen before in this country. So there's still a huge drive, but not the Darien Gap. <laughs> I've learnt my lesson from that experience. Good luck. Thanks very much. Thank you. In my job, I have the pleasure of meeting all sorts of people from all walks of life. The very few never cease to amaze me, but Tom Hartdyke has to be one of them. What an incredible man with an amazing story. Fancy being able to literally talk your way out of a situation of life or death. Julie Maddox at Lullingston for your Kent TV.